Hello and welcome to Agilifying Agile Coaches. My name is Nigel Baker and if we haven't met before, I am an Agile Coach and Certified Scrum Trainer for the last 15 years. This is the first video in a series of six, all on the topic of Agilifying Agile Coaches. You see, many Agile Coaches aren't. They are not agile and they are not coaches. Now, I have written a little on the idea of coach versus consultant in the past. I have definitely spoken about it at conferences. The idea behind these videos is to explore that concept further. The first fact is many agile coaches do not appreciate there are a range of coaching stances they could take. Now, these come under a variety of names, depending on what literature you read and what industry you're in. I personally consolidated them under the phrases consult, collaborate, and coach. At a high level, consult is when you tell someone the answer. You give advice. Collaborate is when you work side by side, trying to solve the problem together. And coach is when you listen and help them find their own answers. Of course, by doing so, I've just introduced the idea via a consulting or telling stance rather than a coaching one. So I'm doing this video a little bit hypocritically. Ah. But whatever terminology you use, a coach can move between stances to find the right approach to work in any particular scenario. The idea is not that one stance is wrong, but only having one stance, and only being aware of one stance, could be very limiting. Our second problem is about applying that idea to Agile. How Agile are Agile coaches? Many of us are inflexible, adamant, and pushing method without care for context. Dogmatists. But context has been the excuse for too much half-baked agility, dark scrum, cant ban, flexibility of principles in political situations. That delicate dance of agile versus agile, purist versus pragmatic, and how that interacts with the idea of coaching in general is an area worth exploring. So, how, as a coach, do we decide which stance to use? How do we decide how agile to be with our agile? These two aspects, agile and coach, link together for me in many fascinating ways. Let's look at that first word, agile. Synonyms include adaptable, supple, flexible. Flexibility means options. Options means choices. Choices means decisions. Decisions means cognitive thought and effort. Thought can mean uncertainty. Uncertainty hurts. Uncertainty wounds. Uncertainty is scary. There is a recent UCL study that showed that uncertainty can cause more stress than inevitable pain. Knowing that there is a small chance of getting a painful electric shock can lead to significantly more stress than knowing you will definitely be shocked, finds a new UCL study funded by the Medical Research Council. This is a huge concern. People generally crave certainty. I remember, I think it was Steve McConnell, saying at the Seattle Global Scrum Gathering in 2011, businesses prefer wrong over vague. This isn't just true of businesses. Imagine you are an agile coach. Your clients may indeed seek and actively request certainty from you. Should we do X or should we do Y? And, as a human being, it may be painful for you to be unsure in that situation. 
So we speak with great confidence. We gain assurance in our knowledge, our experience, and we confirm that indeed the answer is X. This makes us feel less pain, no uncertainty. It may make them happy, no uncertainty. But it may be wrong. Most classic project models are built around rapidly reducing uncertainty in requirements, estimates and work. Most don't work, but that rapid reduction of obvious fear is attractive. This is where the door opens for Kenevin. Now, I am no Kenevin expert, but I am a fan. For me, it helps build a more appropriate mental model for our complex deliveries, which is really the inherent uncertainty in the evolutionary nature of complex systems. This is as true about the people and the methods as it is about the content of product development. They are all complicated and complex, and in reality blur together more than we appreciate. The idea of safe-to-fail empirical trials or experiments to discover the right direction of your approach is very different to how organisation or team change has historically been undertaken. So, as an Agile coach, our understanding of Agile may lead directly into the coaching stances we take. Example number one. As a brand new coach, I may make the mistake of using classic delivery models to introduce Agile, or any change really. The big upfront plan, minimal change imposed top down by senior management. We have all seen this. This is a the meta concern for me. This is just traditional management. Command over consult or collaborate or coach. Let's just say, as a coach, I am now aware that the overall approach the organisation is taking may be flawed. They are not being agile with their introduction of it. But I am aware of that. That does not make me immune from the same natural human conditions. Example number two. As a newbie coach, I may only ever adopt the consult or teach stance as I cannot emotionally handle the uncertain nature of a changing method or framework in differing content conditions. My breadth of knowledge is low, so I stick to the shallow waters. If someone disagrees, we can use industry documentation such as the Scrum Guide or something similar to show how we are correct. This is, at best, argument from authority and potentially is a classic debating fallacy. I am not deliberately, or maybe even consciously, adopting traditional methods. I am just handling the pain of uncertainty by being faux certain. So one way to mitigate this is to gain a deeper understanding of the approaches we take, to understand where we can, and indeed should, flex the method, and where we should keep discipline and not malform that particular approach. That deeper knowledge would also allow us to be able to build ideas up from first principles via bottom-up coaching, rather than impose them in a semi-religious format, top-down consultancy. By doing so, we start appreciating the different options as opportunities. We have journeyed down many of these paths before, and so know the way. Well, with complex work, that isn't really true, and so we probably don't know the way in reality. But far more importantly, by understanding that these paths are safe to take, the fear of the hanging Damocles sword right above our heads fades away. There will be no shock. The next video will be on the subject, People often get wrong the difference between different and wrong where we will discuss some methods to help mitigate this and understand which paths are more appropriate than others. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.